Today I'm just going to go over how to use the uh, checkpoint system that Vampire has. This can be used for a few things. Um, mainly uh, it can be used if you have a very long simulation that you'd like to break down into smaller pieces. Um, it allows you to save the end state of your simulation and then continue it at a later time. Um, in addition to this, it can also be very useful when you would like to do a simulation where some of the parameters change halfway or at different points along the simulation. Currently in Vampire, most parameters are static and cannot be changed during a simulation. However, if you save the end state of your simulation, change those parameters and then continue, the new simulation will have similar dynamics, but will use different parameters when it starts. So to do this, uh, let's just take a look at um, Vampire's basic input file that you get in its source. So here we've got the input file for a Cobalt simulation, I believe. So we're just going to ignore the outputs for now. It's not really important. And actually I'll just no, I'll leave these in. What we're going to do is we're going to use sim save checkpoint equals. Now, there are a couple of options you have here. You can either use sim safe checkpoint end um, or sim safe checkpoint equals um, continuous, something like that. Um, basically, the difference is that if you use end, your simulation will only save the very last end state of your simulation. So that means that it has to reach the end. Um, whereas if you use sim safe checkpoint equals continue, um, then it'll be outputting configuration files or checkpoint files rather as the simulation go, goes along periodically. This can be very useful if, for example, you've submitted a simulation to a cluster and you're not 100% sure if it will end in the amount of a lot of time that you have. Um, if let's say your simulation doesn't reach its end and uh, fails abruptly, um, then you should still have some checkpoint files that have been created at some point in your simulation. So you won't have to start from the very beginning. Um, obviously this is very useful if you're trying to minimize the amount of time lost in these situations. So for now we'll just use sim safe checkpoint end. Uh, and actually with that, let's lower the number of total time steps so that the simulation is very fast. Okay. So I do that and run the simulation. And you should be able to see, here you go. Actually, let me just move my camera so you can see this. Oops. Yep, there we go. So right there down at the end, there is a vampire zero dot check. That is the checkpoint file. Now, I believe if you run vampire in parallel, you will have a checkpoint file created for every single core that you run vampire on. If you run a simulation in parallel over 10 cores, you will have 10 checkpoint files. I believe that that does have the downside that you will therefore have to continue any simulations on the same number of cores. So I've run this in serial, I've produced one checkpoint file, now I want to continue my simulation. To do that, I go back to the input file, and I shall use a new parameter. Um, if you want to, you can actually leave the sim safe checkpoint equals end there. That would be fine. It'll just give you some updated checkpoint files at the end of your simulation. Or you can comment it out if you no longer need them. So I'm going to comment that out, but feel free to leave it. The only constraint you have really is that sometimes these checkpoint files are very large and can take up a lot of space. The one other thing that you have to do after using this parameter is to change the total number of time steps. When you continue a simulation, it will continue from the last time step that took place. So I've, I've 1000 time steps have happened in the simulation so far. 
I have to increase this number. So I'm going to do double that and I'm going to go to 2000. If you leave this value the same, the simulation will do nothing. So whatever you do, it has to be any number higher than what you initially had. So it has to be any number higher than 1000 for me. After that, it can be whatever you want. So I'll save that. And I'll continue. And that checkpoint file that you see there is actually just the same as the old one. Nothing has changed about it. Let's see if I can see a difference in the output file. Yeah, so I probably should have shown this initially, but I think that this line will have been there when I did the first simulation and this line has just been made. In fact, let's just, uh, oh no, I can't. Yeah, let's, let's try this again, just in case. So I'll remove the output file. I'll do 1000 steps. I'll save the simulation. Do note that you cannot start a simulation with the line sim load checkpoint equals continue if no checkpoint files are present, if you have no initial uh, starting point. So I'm gonna comment that out. There we go. You'll see the output has one line so far. I increase the total time steps to 2000. And I'm going to continue my simulation. There we go. And now if I look at the output file, there's the second line. Um, so there you go. It's really not too hard to use the checkpoint system. Um, there's many good reasons to use it. Um, it's very useful if you're doing anything on a cluster and you'd like to create periodic checkpoint files. Um, it means that you can save a lot of time in case anything goes wrong, you run out of time or there's just some general um, failure with the cluster. Uh, so yeah.